you own damage with a side of damage and extra damage served hot for takeaway, then Kura is for you. Hey everyone, it's me again. Today I got Shikora, the crazy cat lady. She's one of the strongest warframes in the game, in the massive amounts of red crits, and a very useful warframe for farming. So without further ado, let's head to her kit. Starting with her passive, that gives her Venari her own cavat, which is a monable cat. As long as your cat exists on the field, you get 15% bonus movement speed, and if the cat is dead, it goes into 45 seconds cooldown. You can control your Venari through your third ability, switching between healing, defense, and attack. And you can also replace her third ability with any helmet of your choice and keep the cat since it's the passive, not the ability. Now, let's head to her bread and butter. Her first ability, Whip Claw. It's a pseudo exalted weapon that benefits from ability strength, combo counter, and the equipped melee mods, meaning this ability requires a stat stick, same like Atlas. We'll get to the modding section later. Her second ability, Ensnare. She targets an enemy and drags every single enemy around him within the range, creating a big clump of enemies. This ability allows you to deal two times damage with your whip claw. Last but not least, her fourth ability, the Strangle Dome. One of the best CC abilities in the game, and the tool Korra is known for to farm resources with its augment, pilfering strangle dome. This ability strangles all the enemies around it, and those who are not strangled are forced to target those enemies that are strangled, pretty much like a radiation proc. Now, how to mod a stat stick in Korra. First of all, you need to know that most of Korra's builds go with negative strength, so our base damage on Whip Claw is doomed. So how do we fix that? We have an augment called Accumulating Whip Claw that gives you 360% base damage on Whip Claw whenever you hit three enemies, stacking up to the maximum of 360 with each hit. So we're going to be using this augment on our build and mod for a stat stick instead of modding strength. So how do we choose a stat stick? Go to your arsenal and pick a random melee, except the Zoris and any combo pause in melee. For example, here I got the Cronin Prime. The stats you see on the left does not matter. But wait, before we mod for a Korra stat stick, you need to know what's Whipclaw's stats. Whipclaw has 25% critical chance, 2 times critical multiplier, and 25% status chance. And the damage is distributed evenly between slash impact and puncture, which is the IPS. So we want to mod for critical chance and critical damage mostly and DT in case we want to go for a DT instead of raw damage So We start by adding prime pressure point for base damage. This will bear additively with accumulating whip claw. Now with critical chance with sacrificial steel and blood rush, critical damage and more crit chance with gladiator might, more crit damage with organ shatter. Now if you want to go for a corrosive build, you can add the dual elemental mods to form corrosive and split strike for more base damage. If you want to go for a slash DOT build, in this case, you would want to remove split strike, shocking touch, and prime fever strike for weapon wounds, boss kill, and carnage mandible to increase your slash waiting on your whip claw. If you, and if you want to go for a toxin damage and DOT for corpus units, in this case, you would drop boss kill and carnage mandible for. Prime Fever Strike and the 6060 Toxin Mod. And if you want to go for a gas build for the Infested, you drop the 6060 mod for Molten Impact. This is how you mod for a stat stick. This is an example for my stat stick. It's the Serata. I do have a ribbon of crit chance and crit damage. If you want to go for a ribbon, a 2 stats ribbon and a negative, or a 3 stats and a negative. Why a negative? Because negative stats in greatly increase your positive stats. So try going for a high disposition weapon to be your stat stick. Focus on base damage, critical damage, maybe crit chance, or some elements, positive slash. And here's a list of three negatives, like negative faction damage, negative range, negative attack speed, negative crit chance for slide attack, 
these stats doesn't affect Korra by anything. Now with that out of the way, let's head to Korra's building. For the build requirement, you need 3 red shards for critical damage for melee, 3 red shards for crit damage to melees, and 2 tau forged blues for energy maximum. Oh hey, it's me taking a break from all of this editing, so during this time, feel free to drop a like or barely subscribe. Okay, let's continue. Now let's talk about the best statistic for Korra. Long ago, this question would be a troll question since every single weapon works except the combo pause and melee like I mentioned. But now, there is actually a best statistic for Korra, introducing the Magistar Incarnate, the normal version, since its last evolution gives 16% base critical chance and extra 1 times base critical damage. Meaning Korra's stats now is 41% base critical chance and 3 times critical multiplier. You already gain a damage boost from just having the incarnate version. And there is one dude over there who is probably a flat earther who would say the ceramic incarnate exists. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, the ceramic incarnate would give you extra red crits, but Korra actually red crit from nothing. So the extra critical damage will give you more damage and guess what you're still gonna be red critting with this extra 16% since the base is 41. So I did the math for you and our total is 351% and 10 critical damage. Yeah, the Magistar Incarnate is the best stat stick in the game. Moving on. Okay now, let's see how our loadout should be looking like. For focus school I'm using Vazrin, since there is no point using anything else. But, you can use Naramoon for the power spike node to maintain our combo furthermore, if you want to AFK of course. For priming I'm using the Epitaph mod for viral and heat, and in case of a nullifier shows up, I'm using the miter with the neutralizing justice augment. Make sure to have double dexterity arcanes on your primary and secondary weapon and the rest is utility and reload speed for Korra herself in the aura I got brief respite for energy shield conversion prime sure footed for the list time in your butt the augment accumulating whip claw for base damage to my whip claw pilfering strangle dome to drop more loot from enemies catalyzing shields to reduce my shields and put my shield gauge at one at 1.33 seconds for AG or shield gating, prime continuity for duration on my ensnare and strangle dome, following guard for the 3 seconds of invulnerability and stat splints, stretch and overextended for range, arcane eruption for, to knock down enemies when I, whenever I pick an energy ult, and arcane fury for extra 120% base damage whenever I crit. Now you will be asking, King, how am I maintaining my energy? This will be fairly easy done with Leketh Hunt. From Varuna and Equilibrium and a synth fiber on any of my companions. This is a good way to take me to Venari and my other companion, which can be whatever you want. But for Venari, you must have this certain build: synth fiber to pick up health orbs, even if I, even if I'm full HP. Prime leader pack to give my Venari overguard so it can survive in steel path. Tenadin bond to help me gain combo whenever my Kavat hit enemies with a melee attack and the rest is vacuum and link vitality and synth deconstruct to help me generate more health orbs and animal instinct for more enemy radar your other companion can be literally whatever you want you can go for smita kabat with this build or a worm or the hound i have shown in hydroid's video but make sure you have tenacious bond on your companion with bite in case of it's a kafat or or a critical chance mod on a vault lock if it's a sentinel. Another way to buff your critical damage even more by using Magus Igris on your operator. You can activate this arcane by doing a melee transfer and get a 4 attacks buff to 300% critical damage. This attack is for heavy blades only but the arcane is bugged and it works on hammers too and what is the magistar yeah exactly another thing this buff works on pseudo exalted weapon indefinitely meaning it will not consume the stacks to enjoy it while still can 
In my case, I don't possess the arcade, so I won't. Sad. That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video or learned something new. Please consider subscribing. It's free. You can always change your mind. Also, drop a like. It's very appreciated. Stay tuned and see you all next time. Oh, <laughs>